the best Laura trainer out there on the planet, period. I know that's a bold statement, but here's why I'm saying it. Back before I started Pixel Dojo, I spent about a year on my YouTube channel teaching people how to train and update and create Laura's first Stable Diffusion, Stable Diffusion XL. And one of the things that I found is it was a pain in the neck, especially if you wanted to train it locally. The software constantly changes. Koya SS is a pain. Collab is a pain. It doesn't matter what you use. It was always difficult. Lots of steps in between. So one of the things I wanted to build with Pixel Dojo was a place where I could make everything as simple as possible to use. You have access to all of the cutting edge AI tools and you still have the advanced settings you need if you're a power user and you wanna do something really cool. So with that out of the way, here is the Flux Laura Trainer. Now you can see right off the bat, you've got three different options. You can either start with a zip file upload, multiple images, or a single image. And we'll go through each of these in a little bit more detail. I've got this frequently asked questions section. And you know, just to level set, what the heck is a Laura? Well, it's a model that you train on top of an existing foundation model. So in this case, Flux Dev. What we're doing is we're saying, hey, Flux Dev, here are some images of a person or object. Go ahead and use that as training data so that you can recreate that person or that object or that style over and over when I go to create images later. And the way we do that is we take a bunch of images and we upload them into the system. And I'll show you how to do that three different ways. So the first, zip file upload, super simple. Click on the zip file uploader. All you've got is this input box to put a zip file. So I'll go ahead and click on this and we'll go ahead and just grab a zip file. Now, this is simple. All I did is take about 15, 20 images of myself, various lighting conditions, wearing different outfits, different days, different backgrounds, that sort of thing. And I just put all those into a zip file. I named them all B-Love because that's the trigger word that we're gonna use. The trigger word is just a unique token that you end up using to create images later on. So in this case, we'll just say be love. And I typically like to pick something that's unique. So you could say talk be love, something that there aren't going to be other images of in the data set. The caption prefix, this is something that every single image as it's getting processed is going to be captioned. What that means is it's gonna analyze those images and it's gonna say, okay, for this person, they're wearing a blue shirt, they have black hair, they have this type of sunlight, this type of scenery, et cetera, et cetera. You can add a prefix so that it just sort of gets things started. In this case, we could say a photo of B-Love man, and we'll leave it at that. So it's gonna get prepended to all of the captions. Training type, this for now is just internal. It's for you to go ahead and just understand if this was a person training or a style or an object, so you can select one there. Auto captioning, some people turn this off. Some people leave it on. You can also, when you upload your zip file, you can have your own captions. You just need a text file that has the same name as the image. You put all of your captions inside of there. It gets used during training. Finally, you've got training steps. Now, when you join Pixel Dojo, you get 10 LoRa trainings on Flux per month. That's included at no extra charge. If you wanna do more than that, you can purchase additional credits, but one credit equals a thousand training steps. And this is the number of times that each image is passed through the neural network to be trained. A lot of people, they'll say that, you know, 2000 or 2500, even as high as 3000 steps can produce better, more lifelike qualities in the final result. The one caveat to that is you can overtrain the LoRa, meaning as you add more steps, it becomes less flexible it's going to produce more images that resemble the training data. So wearing the same shirt with the same backgrounds, that sort of thing, than it would if you had lower training steps. So a good balance here, usually around 2000, 2500 is pretty good. We'll go right in the middle. We'll just stick at 2500. And then there's some experimental beta settings. You don't need to worry about that. That's for advanced users. But if you're curious, what that does is it allows you to adjust the LoRa rank. This is really how much the model is able to capture kind of fine details. So skin textures, things like that. 16 is usually okay. Sometimes 32 can produce better results. You don't wanna to go too high because again, you can get sort of overbaked or overtrained in the model and then it's not as flexible later.
And then for real power users, there's this idea of layers to train. So a Flux Laura is trained on 494 separate layers. It's been found through experimentation that the only layers that really seem to matter that much are called the attention layers. And out of those attention layers, there are four that seem to be really important. 7, 12, 16, and 20. You can even get away with just training on layer 7 and still get a good result. You get a much smaller file and it's a much faster training. So in some cases you could go with say 3000 steps, train on one, two or three layers and you get a really high quality result, but it doesn't take as long. In my case, I'm just gonna leave all that alone and we're gonna turn off the beta settings for now. So with that out of the way, all we have to do now is click start training. Now that kicks off the process and you can see here that based on the settings that you select, sometimes the training can take around 10 minutes all the way up to 90. In this case, this one's probably about 45 minutes based on the settings that we did. And when it's done, it's just gonna show up in my custom models. So we'll go ahead and check back on that later. You can successfully leave this page. Once things have started, it's gonna run in the background. It's just gonna show up in your account. You don't have to do anything else. But let's look at the other two options you have for training because I think those are really fascinating as well. So as you can see, the second of the three options is multiple images. Select this, you can drag and drop up to 12 images here. So we'll just open this up, we'll grab a folder and we'll just select a whole bunch of images here. Now, as you can see, it automatically adds them to the card so you can see exactly how many images you've gotten. And then all you have to do there is continue to training. Images are zipped up and they're ready to go. You've got the exact same form to fill out. So you select your trigger word, your caption prefix, training steps, click start training. That's it, off to the races. Now you could just go with all the default settings. You'll still get a great result. You don't have to do anything else. So again, super crazy simple. And that takes us to probably my single favorite way to do a training, and that's with a single image. So there are situations where, let's say you create a really cool image with Stable Diffusion, Excel, or even with Flux, but you've only got one image of that person. You don't have enough to actually train Allura. Well, this is gonna help you out. So go ahead and click on Upload an Image, and that's all you have to do, you click Generate Images. What this does is this uses two different models on the back end. It's gonna create consistent characters. So it's going to take your person, your kind of uploaded photo, it's going to create a character that has different poses. So sort of the different looks, motions, faces turned different ways, that sort of thing. And then what it's going to do is it's going to take all of those images that are generated and it's going to run them through magic relighting. These are both tools that you can access here in the menu. So if you go to the enhance section, you can see that you've got magic lighting. This is how you can adjust the lighting of your images. I'll show you what that looks like here. You can see there's a whole bunch of presets. You can just drag and drop an image in here, say this one, and you can select a preset like an office scene, rainy day party, or you can just describe your own by providing a prompt and you can select which direction the light will face. So this gives you really cool way to adjust your images and come up with some really cool new ways to show them off. The other one is consistent characters. Very similarly, you just drag and drop an image of a single person. You do a headshot photo, number of poses, so you could do all the way up to four different poses, number of images per pose, hit generate, it's gonna create those poses for you. Those are both happening in the background automatically when you select this single photo upload Laura Trainer. We won't tell my friend that I'm showing you this, but the other night when I was at dinner with a friend of mine, I took a single picture of him while we were sitting at a cafe, his name's Galeep, and I was able to just upload that into the system with the single image and create this Laura of him doing all kinds of wacky things, which of course we had a good laugh over dinner about. So it works and you can even do it with just a photo of a person. And here you can see the results. There's our original image. Here are two different variations. One is the source, one is relit. And then you can see a whole bunch of variations here. You've got all the different poses that I talked about. And then you've got each of those in a different background and with different lighting. This gives all the variation that you need in order to train a pretty solid Laura. So now you can click on continue to training and you can see images zipped successfully. 
And just like before, you've got the exact same form. This is all very simple on the back end. So now you just click on start training. And again, you're off and running. Once the trainings are done, you're going to head over to my custom models. You can see loading styles, and here's all of the different Loras that I've trained in the past. You can go in here, you can set a name for each one. You can even upload a thumbnail image if you'd like. This gives you a great way to keep everything nice and organized. And best of all, you can even save this to your own computer so you can download this. You can use it on your own machine. If you want to use Comfy UI or Focus locally, you absolutely can. These are trained on Flux Dev, but the models also run on Flux Schnell, so you can still run them locally. Now, from here, there are a bunch of different tools you can use on Pixel Dojo that can rely on these LoRa's to make the results even better. So the first one is the Flux Image Creator. You can jump in here and you'll notice straight away you've got access to Flux Schnell, Schnell LoRa, Hyperflux 8 and 16, Flux Pro, Pro 1.1, which just came out yesterday, Dev Realism, and Dev LoRa. So in our case, we'll go with Dev LoRa. And you can see right down here, you've got all your custom models. So you can even do a full text search if you've got a whole bunch of models, or you can just click on one of these. So in this case, I'll click on this one. You can see it adds it up here to the custom LoRa's and it automatically adds the string that you need to use in order to generate a photo with this. Say a photo of beloved man sitting in a cafe in Lisbon wearing a red shirt that says Pixel Dojo with short buzzed hair. We'll do Instagram portrait style. We'll just leave everything else as it is. Now you do have a bunch of advanced options. You can control the seed, you can control the Laura strength, everything else. But again, you can just click generate and you'll get a good result either way. And here we go. This is exactly what comes out of it right straight away. You can see he's wearing a red shirt, Pixel Dojo, short buzzed hair, and uh, I'd say looks pretty darn similar to me. Now from here, you've got a couple of options. You can either download the image to your own computer, never get saved on Pixel Dojo, or you can save it to my images right here on Pixel Dojo over here on the left hand side, or you can even send it to the upscaler if you wanted to 2x, 4x, even 8x the size of this. Now what if you're not that great at creating a prompt? You can use this enhance button that does is it sends the base prompt that you provided into a large language model. And as you can see, it comes back with a much, much more detailed version of the prompt. Let's go ahead and generate an image from that as well. And there we go. Now we've got a second image. Looks like there's a more Portuguese style house mural baby on the back, different lighting and effects like that. And one of the really cool things here is that with Flux Dev Laura, you can actually support up to 20 Lauras in a single image. So I could use this one of myself. We could also come down here and use this one of a Rivian. And we could even select something like, I don't know, Flux Realism. You can do up to 20 in a single image. Now, this gets a little bit tricky. Doing stuff like two people in the same image is somewhat difficult, but there's some other tools in here that make that a little bit easier. So let's go ahead and take these images and we'll head on over to one of these other tools called Flux Image to Image. So we'll jump over there. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna load up this image that I generated that sort of looks like me, right? And so what we're going to do is we're going to take this, let's say I like the look, the aesthetic, everything else, but it's just not quite there. We're going to go down and we're going to see my Laura's. We're going to select B love again. And you can see just like the others, it gets added right to the prompt. We're going to delete the rest. We don't want an anime character here. And let's see, we'll say a photo of B love wearing a pixel dojo t-shirt. Click on generate and hopefully we get back a really cool result here. And there we go. Now the likeness is getting a lot closer. This is pretty good. So you've still got the original image. You still have the logo on the t-shirt, everything else. But now it looks a heck of a lot more like my character. Now we can go ahead and save this. And what if we don't like the t-shirt? We don't like the Pixel Dojo logo. Well, we've got two other options we can explore there too. Of course, our tool set includes under the enhance tab, flux based in painting. So with the flux based in painting, we're going to grab that image that we just created and we've got this brush tool built in. We're just going to brush right on over the pixel dojo logo. And then we're just going to give it a prompt of what we want to place in there. So we'll say a shirt that reads flux pro click submit. We're not going to do anything else. Now, the other cool thing about this tool though, is that you can do either this brush based in painting, or you can do prompt based in painting it uses the meta segment, anything. So you can say, Hey, I want to keep the park bench, but I want to get rid of the dog. 
that sort of thing. Just natural language, and it'll create the masking for you. Really cool stuff. And there we go. Now we've got Flux Pro on the shirt instead of Pixel Dojo, but we've still got our original character. And that leads us to the last tool I'm going to show you that uses Flux Loras. You can come down here to Pose Control. So we'll come up with, I don't know, we'll do something crazy, actually. We'll upload one from my computer that I happen to have here. And this one, there's this girl, she's grabbing the top of her hair. It's going to be a tough one to sort of reproduce. But what we're going to do is we're going to add a Laura to this as well. So we'll add a custom Laura. And for this, we'll just go down to My Lauras. And we'll select, let's say, Taylor Swift. So Talk Swifty. We're not going to do anything else here. Now, you can control this in a lot of different ways. So we're going to leave the prompt alone. But you could add your own prompt, change the background, change the scenery and just sort of keep that pose. You also have some advanced options for those that want to get really crazy with this. You can go image to image strength, so you can adjust how much the original image influences the final image. You can even change all the depth mapping. So this uses depth. You could use canny or soft edge. The preprocessor, it's using depth anything, but you could try Midas, Zo, Zo anything. And you can also change the other preprocessors as well. So. The defaults that I've got here work for most images, but if you're a power user, you've still got all that cool stuff you can layer on if you want to and need to. Now this is honestly, this is almost like face swap, the way that this works. So if you've got a Laura trained on somebody, you can come in here with one image and you'll leave with something completely different and we'll see how that works. And there we go. Now you've got Taylor Swift with her hands on her head, followed the pose really, really well. Now you can come in here obviously with your prompt you can change this up so that you can change the background or the setting, the scenery, anything you want, but pretty amazing straight off the go with no adjustments to the settings, just out of the box, click generate. And that was really the entire reason to build Pixel Dojo. Take this stuff that's really difficult to do on your own at home, make it really simple in a UI, but also give power users the ability to jump in and really do some cool stuff. Now, that was just a couple of the over 20, I think 22, 25 tools. I have lost count of how many I've built here, but they all come in the same subscription. Let me know if you have any comments down below. Otherwise, I'm Brian. We'll check you next time. Thanks.